BP put an announcement out that they're looking for people with vessels to help with the oil. The contracts, everybody want to get on the contract because they're making really good money. But you, you go to a class, you take a course, and you wait. And there's nothing going on. They, at first, BP had the contract where you couldn't, BP wasn't liable for anything that would happen to you as for respiratory problems or if you get injured or anything like that. They took them to court. They made them change the contracts. But, I mean, there's nothing going on. When the president comes, they do a dog and pony show for him when he flies over. They put people, busloads of people to work where the helicopter's flying over. The, the president comes on shore, touches some oil, says, good job, y'all, gets back on the helicopter, goes, flies right back over the people to go back to the airport. They load those people up back on the buses and ship them home. Is that so? That is so. And the president of BP said, well, you got to understand, it's very hot in South Louisiana, and we're looking out for their safety. Well, two hours on a beach, cleaning you mean, up? You mean BP put those people there to make it look like oh, yes. they were doing something? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If you look at the news footage, you got people in spacesuits carrying empty garbage bags. If you look at the news footage, so what are they doing? Yeah. I can get a thousand people behind me. Where am I going? Where am I going? There's nobody in Lafitte. There's nobody in Venice. We went to Venice. The, the BP headquarters in Venice. Is that what? That, well, that's where everything was started at. We went to Venice to try to help. They had two people in the office. Couldn't answer any questions. The BP doesn't want to have anything to do with anything. Yeah. That's why when we went to class, we asked about the to toxicity of the stuff. Well, I'm not a scientist, I can't tell you. Well, can you get one here? This is our livelihood, this is our life. Can you get one here? Can you answer one question? A guy from Boston. And they, yeah. what they say to that? We, we don't deal with that part. Okay, this is why you're not gonna get a straight answer out of anybody. Because once y'all do what y'all have to do here, and nobody wants to be vague, and the people that will say something about what's going on, once y'all leave here, Y'all do whatever y'all do with a documentary three months, six months later. When y'all leave here, I need to get a job to save my house. My way of life is over. So I have to go to BP and beg them for a job. So six months when this becomes public domain, what am I going to say to BP? Well, Rodney, you've been talking bad about us. You've been telling what people we don't want to hear. We don't need you working for us anymore. Well, it's all fine and dandy, but somebody's got to say something. You take away fishing for the next five, six what? years. How do you pay your bills? Yeah. How do you pay your house notes? You know, now, now you have a juggle and a balance that you have to try to decide, do you need to go make money? Or do you not go make money and stay alive or go work for this company knowing what happened with Exxon Valdez? No, and it's been shown over and over again. You do something of this nature and go work out there and you turn around and die in 10 years. You know, so now these guys are having to decide this. You know, a lot of them, I've heard a lot of them that are, um, you know, they're going to try to get yeah. out there and get everything set up. And then once the cleanup part starts, they don't know if they want to be involved in it. You know, once it comes to handling oil, they don't know if they want to be involved in it. Um, you know, respirators don't help. Um, the only thing I, I could imagine that would cause it would be the benzene. Um, they said that it's actually, um, it will actually go in, in your pores and your skin. So respirators and clothing, and that, it, it doesn't affect it, it doesn't help it. So these guys are stuck between, I mean, I have fishermen apologizing to me for working this oil spill. You know, not that they don't want to help clean up, but they've never worked for big companies. They don't want to work for big companies, and they damn sure don't want to work for BP. And they, they all feel like they're working for BP right now, and they feel like they shouldn't be doing it. But they have to make money, they have to live, they have to provide. Mm -hmm. So we're not reporters. We don't claim to be uh, part of the press in any way. You know. This is strictly just trying to figure out what happened here. Some of my friends and myself just came here to, to help and bring awareness to it because it's our feeling that people should know and they should come here. They go to the Gulf and, and help. We've seen floods. We've seen hurricanes. This place was flooded twice in six years. 
so you can recover. Last time, 26 inches of water where y'all standing. Really? But floods we could overcome. But that you can. Hurricanes you could overcome. But not oil. This is, you mean. You get a tidal surge right now, this time of the year. We all screwed. You're going to have water, you're going to have oil in your bathtub. Mm -hmm. You imagine oil sheen coming in here with 26 inches of water? And it can't contain it. Not a tidal right surge. No containment, no. That's it. This is the map of this general area from here, just about all the way to Grand Isle, where y'all hit it. That's the channel you're going to run to Grand Isle. Where, where are we now? You're right here, Joe's Landing. I see. Now, this is this imaginary line they got right now. This is the only area we could fish. Anything south of this is, is closed off. Y'all going to take this channel. So this, this is, is this is almost like an interstate running. So right is this like now. spawning areas and stuff? Well yeah, this is our estuary. This one of the biggest estuary in 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 the yeah. United States. All your shrimp come in to lay, your fish come out the Gulf of Mexico to spawn. Oh, we got we got the, that's why we call this the sportsman's paradise, because we got everything here. Yeah. Or had everything here. Anything they did wrong, they waited too long. Right. They had two weeks of meetings here, meetings there, meetings here, meetings there, and all the while that oil was floating down. They had the booms on the beaches ready to go. They had the boats assigned. You know, they waited till the oil was in. Well, you know where it's at, full bypass. They waited till the oil got into the full bypass Saturday. Monday they deployed the boats. And just like after the horse leaves the barn, they close the door. It was two weeks behind it. Can you imagine if this here is infested with oil? Yeah. That's our big worry right now. Mud, mud and water you could wash out, two days later you're back in business. This here is full of oil. Yeah. No telling. Then it when it's gonna affect the health too. Not only uh, not and nobody only, from BP wants to tell you what the long term effects are with the oil. Oh, he's hurting. He's got his son works here, his granddaughter works here, his grandson that works here. Yeah, family. That's all over with. Yeah. Lives right there. I just wish they would tell us the truth. You know, what it's really happening. Where is it really going to? How is it really going to affect us? So we can prepare ourselves for life. Because this just happened a month or two months ago, but what's gonna happen next year? I have a daughter that's going to college. She just graduated from high school. What am I gonna do then? What, what am I supposed to tell my daughter? You can't have the benefit of college because I can't work. It just kills me that they didn't learn their lesson from Katrina about jumping on to getting involved into something and getting something done instead of going through all the red tape. And they, they haven't learned a lesson. They're still doing it. They haven't done what needs to be done to try and try anything to absorb what needs to be absorbed. Don't let it just sit there and come ashore and ruin all of our culture and all of our coastline. Our way of life, what we used to do, that's it. So, unless a miracle happens, soon, real soon. What does my child have to look forward to? For his three year birthday, Dad, I want a crab trap for my birthday. I want to kid you. Would I ask for a crab trap for the birthday? It's going to be a long time. I don't think I could take it. I can't be around to watch it. I think I'd have to move, get away, I can't see it. I've seen enough today.